for joining us on this first episode of the program this year. Welcome to Edfal. I'm um, Ayola Kasim. The environmental challenges facing Nigeria is enormous. There is the challenge to preserve the country's forests, stop poaching and halt wildlife trafficking so as to protect the world for the future generation. A lot is going wrong. So today on the program, we will highlight what these wrongs are and of course, look at the solutions. As the continent's main exporter of oil, Nigeria faces the challenge of balancing global energy demand and domestic economic stability with the need to address climate and environmental considerations. Impacts of climate change in Nigeria could include rising temperatures, more intense and frequent extreme weather events, and sea level rise. For the population, this could result in increased water and food insecurity, higher exposure to heat stress, and ultraviolet radiation, changes in infectious and vector borne disease transmission patterns, and an increased threat to coastal communities facing sea level rise. Adequate adaptation and mitigation could help to protect public health, development, security, and land and water resources from the potential threats posed by climate change. According to the World Health Organization's Climate and Health Country Profile for Nigeria in 2015, it was found that under a high emissions scenario, mean annual temperature is projected to rise by about 4.9 degrees Celsius on average from 1990 to 2100. If emissions decrease rapidly, the temperature rise is limited to about 1.4 degrees Celsius. Under a high emission scenario and without large investment in adaptation, an annual average of 548,300 people are projected to be affected by flooding due to sea level rise between the years 2070 and 2100. If emissions decrease rapidly and there is a major scale up in protection, that is continued construction and raising of dikes, the annual affected population could be limited to about 300 people. Adaptation alone will not offer sufficient protection. Sea level rise is a long term process with high emission scenarios bringing increasing impact well beyond the end of the century. Under a high emissions scenario, diarrhea deaths attributable to climate change in children under 15 years old are projected to be about 9.8% of the over 76,000 diarrhea deaths projected in 2030. Although diarrhea deaths are projected to decline to approximately 43,500 by the year 2050, the proportion of deaths attributable to climate change will rise to approximately 14.2%. Nigeria also faces inland river flood risk. It is projected that by 2030, an additional 801,700 people may be at risk of river floods annually as a result of climate change and 535,700 due to social economic change above the estimated 621,100 annually affected population in 2010. In addition to deaths from drowning, flooding causes extensive indirect health effects, including impact on food production, water provision, ecosystem disruption, infectious disease outbreak, and vector distribution. Longer term effects of flooding may include post traumatic stress and population displacement. By 2070, under both high and low emissions scenarios, over 400 million people are projected to be at risk of malaria. Population growth can also cause increases in the population at risk in areas where malaria presence is static in the future. If you're just talking about climate change, it doesn't ring a bell much. But if you're able to show that if we don't do anything, much of the coastal region of Nigeria will be gone with one or two storms, government will be more interested in that they don't want their investment to perish. If you're able to say, for instance, that if you do anything, much of agricultural thing we're even we have effect. If you link it with health, if you link it with economic development, if, you know, then it makes more sense. So also, it's so difficult for a minister of environment to be saying talk about environment when there is uh, meningitis. 
the Minister of Health will find it easier to go to the President and say, I have meningitis in uh, this place. But if you now go and follow the Minister of Health, I said, Mr. President, we've been having meningitis before. But this particular year, because of the global warming, is much more serious. So let's don't treat meningitis in isolation. Let's treat the environmental aspect of that meningitis as well. Climate change through higher temperatures, land and water scarcity, flooding, drought and displacement negatively impact agricultural production and causes breakdown in food systems. These disproportionately affect those most vulnerable to hunger and can lead to food insecurity. Vulnerable groups risk further deterioration into food and nutrition crisis if exposed to extreme weather events. Air pollution is now one of the largest global health risks, causing approximately 7 million deaths every year. There is an important opportunity to promote policies that both protect the climate at a global level and also have large and immediate health benefits at a local level. Without considerable efforts made to improve climate resilience, it has been estimated that the risk of hunger and malnutrition globally could increase by up to 20% by 2050.